He knew that that was the man he was looking for, and that the man who uttered those words knew that that's who he was looking for. So a relationship began between those two. And because of that, we are here today. And the man who uttered those words, I know who you are, was a Georgia-born black man. He was born on the hills, the hills of slavery, meaning that he knew what it was like to suffer. Because his parents, he shared cropped, he worked in factories, he did all of that, so he knew the sojourn of our people and our sufferings. And when he saw the master teacher, he knew what his job was going to be, or it was going to be revealed to him. And the man who uttered those words, as I stated, he was born in a place called Saundersville, Georgia, but we later found out from the research team that it was Deep Step, Georgia. And he stayed with his teacher three and one half years, and he said that his teacher talked to him day and night night and day. He said that sometimes he just wanted to get some sleep, but the teacher wouldn't leave him alone. That's a good teacher. <laughs> so the man who uttered those words, the Georgia-born black man, the Georgia-born giant, reborn Elijah Poole, but became known as the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. All praise is due to Allah for that wonderful, wonderful human being. Dear family, but there's another man on scene today a gift to you and I. He was made from the minds of Master Farid Muhammad, made from the mind of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, and given to you and me as a gift to study. Mmm, isn't it good to get a gift? Yes, sir. And it was wrapped beautifully too. But now that it's unwrapped, we can see the full majesty of what it is. But it just so happened that it's a man. And this man that I'm talking about, he is the embodiment of those first two. Master Fard Muhammad and the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. Because like those two, he's bold, he's bad, he's courageous. He is our teacher, leader, guide, friend, confidant. He is the messianic voice of Allah in our midst, the honorable minister, Louis Farrakhan. All praise is due to Allah for those three great human beings. However, I did not meet any of them, but because of the Honorable Minister, not any of them, but I didn't meet those first two, but because of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, I'm wanting to know more about not just God, but myself also. And if any of you have ever read Message to the Black Man, the question that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad asked all of us is, who is God? The most important question that anyone could ever ask. Who is God? But when you can get the answer, that is the most wonderful thing on the planet to receive. Because now you know all your life those questions like the Honorable Elijah Muhammad ad wanted to know and he couldn't get the answer, we can get the answer today. So dear family, thank you for being here. Thank you for being on time. Thank you for submitting to our check procedure because the check procedure is very important because all our lives are involved with that process. Because we can't allow anything or anyone to come in and do harm to you because we're responsible for you. So this is the safest place you could be anywhere on this 196,940,000 square miles of earth. This is the safest place you can be. You know why? Because we've leveled the playing field. You can't come up in here with no nonsense. No, I'm just speaking truth. I'm not talking bad, even though we are, I mean, you know, I mean, it is what it is. But I'm just saying, we level the playing field. Because sometimes when the weight of truth comes across the rostrum and people don't have a requisite understanding of that truth, they don't respond with the greatest of intelligence. Sometimes we want, if we have something carnal on us, you know, we're emboldened and now we, I don't like the way you said that. They want to get up and do something. No, it don't go like that in here. I mean, if we have strange people to come in here, but there's some strange people that was here before they got here, right? And they know how to deal. So, well, so I'm just saying, I ain't boasting, I'm just saying, we know how to handle that kind of thing. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. All praise is due to Allah. Happy Black Father's Day. I got to put emphasis on Black Father's Day. Because there are a lot of fathers in the world, and better yet, there are a lot of daddies in the world. But there's a difference between a daddy and a father, ain't it? You got sugar daddies, you got baby daddies. But now we're talking about father. And a father is one, according to the generic definition, is a man in relation to his child or children. But the definition we got from the Honorable Louis Farrakhan is that a father is one 
who can cause his children and or family to see farther down the road. And they're given life or circumstance. So if you're a father, if that, that template fits you, you can pat yourself on the back. I mean, you can say, hoorah, if you want to. You know what I mean? Because it's not an easy post. I mean, uh, mothers, you know, we're not leaving y'all out. You know, we understand. But today is just happened to be Father's Day. We ain't hypocritical because we know yesterday, last year, the same time, it was still Father's Day for those who are fathers. You know, I remember hearing that song by the Temptations. Papa was a rolling stone. Wherever he laid his hat was his home. Now, they left out a whole lot of little things in there. They kind of like threw a rock and then ran, you know. Papa was a rolling stone. Now, I don't know. All the people that, that was talking to the child seemed like naysayers. Well, okay, haters, right? Because, you know, back during the time that song was made, the white man or the Caucasian's uh, children, they had a law or a rule. The black man couldn't get a job like white men could, right? That's right. So if the woman wanted to feed her children and get a little subsidy check, she had to not have a man in the house, right? That's right. So Papa had to leave. Come on, come on. He wasn't a rolling stone. He was just a running stone because he wanted to do something for his family. In his absence, he had to leave according to the law. On, and the social workers would come out to the house. On, Is there a man up in here? Come on, brother. They looking because they want to cut off the subsidy. Right. So when I hear that song, I'm like, oh, but it's so hypocritical. But if you think about all the things that they said about Papa, Papa did storefront preaching. You know, he did whatever. He, he did hustling. He did all kind of stuff. He was just trying to help make ends meet mm -hmm. the best way he could. Go ahead. Now, that's a real man. Now, and militarily speaking, we heard from our assistant supreme captain, Brother Aziz. He shared with us once. He said, you know, a soldier does what he's paid to do, but a warrior does what he has to do. So sometimes, as a father, we have to sacrifice. We always sacrifice them, right? right? We deny ourselves so that our family can look good. Absolutely. I remember the minister said, you know, brothers, you come to the mosque and all you got is overalls. Wear your overalls. Just make sure they press. And if the lieutenant said, well, brother, you're supposed to have on a suit. He said, well, brother, I don't wear a suit. But look, look, look at my family. Right. How they look? Right. Huh? Right. That's a real father. That's a real black man. A real black father. He sacrifices for his family. You don't abandon them. We don't make children and then don't help to nurture them to go through stage after stage until they uh, reach an eventual point of perfection. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. Just, just a lot of things. You know, I remember when the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was teaching one day and he said these words. He said, well, the minister's telling us the story, but he said that he would always bear witness, the Honorable Louis Farrakhan, really loud. Go ahead, dear holy apostle, teach. He said some of the other ministers wouldn't even want to sit next to him because he'd be bearing witness so loud. I mean, you know how it is when the spirit is in you. You just let it go. Right. <laughs> you, you can't help it. Right. You know, you just move. Ask our, people, ask our family in the church. Don't they get up and shout when they get moved? Huh? They'll knock you down because the spirit hit them a certain way. Well, the minister said this particular day the, the messenger was teaching and he was sitting all the way in the back with the other ministers. And the messenger may have said these words. He said, is, is that my minister out here? And he said, he looked. He said, brother, come on from behind that sycamore tree. He said, come on up here. Sit up here. He said, he came up, and they was making room for him on the front row. And he said that the, the messenger looked at me. He said, uh-uh, no, 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 no. Here. Sit here in my chair. And then he went to telling them. He said, this is a very spiritual brother. And in my absence, he can sit in my chair as father over the house in my absence. Mm. And look at his name, Farrakhan. Some say Farrakhan, but it's Farrakhan. Why? Because every time you listen to him, don't he take us farther than we were in that very instance? So the pr correct pronunciation of his name is the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Because he will take us farther down the road. So much so, all praise is due to Allah. His teacher said that he will get you across the lake or the river on his shoulders. And he won't say, look what I have done. He will say, look what God has done. And the scripture asked the question, what manner of man is this? Mm, he's a very spiritual man. That's what he is. And he loves you and me. That's beautiful. Yes, sir. Father loves his children. You know, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he said these words in one of his hadiths. 
He said that the greatest gift that a father can give to his children is knowledge. And if they are dutiful children to their father, they will become wise. Isn't that beautiful? Yes, sir. So if you couldn't get your child that car, that house, or whatever you wanted to give them, don't worry about that. Give them the beauty benefit of your life experience, and you have in that act given them the most valuable gift that you could ever give them. Mothers too. Y'all, y'all know, y'all know what I'm talking about. Yes, we always teaching. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. It's a little bit more family. You know, uh, the indigenous people on, our, on our, our planet and on the continent of Africa, they refer to the black man, well, let me put it this way, the most magnificent piece of sculpture that was ever made was what they call the Sphinx, right? It sits at the foot of the pyramid. It has the head. You can know it's a black man. Napoleon was so mad that he took, shot, took the cannons and shot 21 times just to blow the nose off, just to try to erase the remembrance of us, but they just couldn't do it. And that piece of sculpture is so magnificent, the indigenous people call it Abu al yes, meaning right. master of the globe. What? Or father of the globe. Yes, sir. So black man, when you look in the mirror, look, if your nose is big now, just hope, wish it was bigger. <laughs> because the real father of the globe had a big nose, yes, and he wasn't ashamed of it. You know why? Because he had big thoughts. Yeah, he had a big head. His ideas and his thoughts were so big that it fed the whole planet. Yes, sir. We are the fathers of every black or every man on the planet. No, that's us. Go ahead. And you know, you hear white women say that their ideal man is tall, dark, and handsome. They ain't talking about Sly Stone. No, they're talking about a black man. A black man that walks the earth heavy and knows who he is. All praise is due to Allah. So my last question to you before I leave, dear family, is have you talked to your father lately? Have you talked to him? Maybe you ain't seen him in a while. Maybe you had a falling now. Maybe it was something you didn't understand about him. Give him a call. He might have something he want to share with you that you didn't know. Now, you call your biological father, but I'm talking about that other father, too. So my, my question is, did you say your prayers lately? <laughs> Talk to the real father, and he'll connect us to the other father, and we'll be in harmony with ourselves. Thank you, dear family, for the time you've allowed me to come before you. Let's bring to this rostrum a father, a hard-working brother, a soldier in the cause of Islam, or should I say a warrior, our Delaware student regional minister, Rodney Muhammad. Bring him on with a loving round of applause. Salam alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, in the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, the one God to whom praise is due, the Lord of the worlds. We uh, thank him, the revealer of all truth and the sender of all prophets, of whom we make no distinction. We thank him for Moses and the Torah. We thank him for Jesus and the gospel. And we thank him for Muhammad and the revelation of the Holy Quran. Uh, as a student, of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad's life-giving message. I'm most thankful to him for his own predicted intervention in our affairs and the person of Master Fraud Muhammad to whom praise is due forever. We uh, thank him because uh, we were the right material. Um, he had a purpose for us. Uh, we were aimless and worthless, but he brought worth to us because he had a purpose for us. That's right. um, the scriptures say we were the stone that the builders of civilization rejected. That's right. That's right. They had no use for us, but there was no use for the brown germ oh. among the original people till Yaqub came. That's right. So once somebody has a purpose for something, that's where the value for that thing comes from. Yeah. And so our value came with him who came from the east even unto the west to take a people that were to be written off as useless, uh, but we would become most useful to him on his coming. And he found one among us um, that became his 100% convert. Uh, he proved that there was worth in us uh, through this one incredible individual, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And um, he is the eternal father and leader of the nation of Islam. That's right. That's right. 
We thank him so much and we thank the God for his coming for each hand and each mind behind that hand and every heart behind that mind and hand from those two that came have made their servant today in the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Right. And he sits as a father over the house for the eternal leader and father of the house. And so in their names, I greet you with the greeting words of peace. I salam alaikum. Um, thank uh, those uh, out, so many are out today for the Juneteenth um, celebration all over the country. And um, we know that um, um, a good number of people in the city of Philadelphia, which is culturally intensive here, are uh, out for uh, the gathering at 52nd Street, and then there were a lot of gatherings yesterday, uh, but they're down at the uh, African American Museum also. And so, um, you know, as they do that, uh, we have to keep going. Why? Because the father of this present world that we're in uh, made his children to be the gods of their own world. And we're in that world, as the scripture says, Satan would deceive the whole world. And so the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan posed the question to us, are we in the world? How then can we boast of escaping deception if we're in the world? And you really and I really can't take correction until I admit I'm in error. Can't take correction until I realize, hey, I've been deceived and I'm going in the wrong direction. And um, so many of us uh, it's easy to reject the message because in the message there's a requirement. Uh, and this world has filled us, really poisoned us with, with uh, false pride. And um, without the humility necessary, um, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan says, without humility we're not going to make it. Um, so today, you know, for the short time that we have come together, um, I was looking at a passage in the book of Matthew. You know, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, you know, yes, we read the Quran, but sometimes the Bible can get after something just a little bit better to help us to raise a point, and that's what we want to deal with today is just a passage in Matthew but it's connected with so many other passages throughout the Bible and you have to remember that in 1934 when Master Fahd Muhammad left and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was then commissioned for the building of this nation for there was already a prophecy uh, from the prayer of Abraham and Ishmael uh, that a nation submissive to God would come out of their offspring. Uh, and if there was to be a nation, uh, it could not come into being without coming into the knowledge of God and someone would have to teach them into that. So the prayer also included a prayer for a messenger that would recite the message, right? And teach them the book. Because the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, we had the Bible, but we were guessing at its meaning. Uh, so that we could take guesswork off the table. Um, someone had to come and teach us out of guesswork into a perfect knowledge of the events of our time. So from 1934 to 1960, um, 1960, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad brought for the nation officially 
the Holy Quran, the one he had selected for us. So what was he teaching from? From 1934 to 1960, he was showing that he had a perfect knowledge of this book that we already had in our hands. And you, you can have the right book, but you could see the right book wrongly. Why? Because we didn't have the right teacher. And so we are thankful to the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. He cleared up the Bible before we even start really studying the Holy Quran uh, to help us. In the book of Matthew, it says, and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many will wax cold. Um, these are sadly predictions, and they're connected with several Old Testament predictions because you have to realize that the New Testament holds about 250 or more passages from the Old Testament prophets to show that there's a connection. And uh, when Jesus comes to teach, he comes to fulfill the prophets. You can't fulfill somebody without presenting to somebody what it is you're fulfilling. So many of the passages that he, that he uh, delivered uh, to the people, you have to realize you can trace them back to the words of prophets of God that had preceded him. He, he had to show his connection to them. And symbolically, there's an image of the man who fulfills the prophets, but he's styled as a woman. And she's clothed in the sun. And being clothed in the light of the sun means there's no aspect of this man's life, publicly or privately, that's out of harmony with the light of the sun. The God that gives that light, his life is not out of sync with that. Those that know the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan uh, and have shared company with him publicly, <laughs> Those that know him and have shared company with him privately, you can bear witness that he's not a different person privately than the one that he is publicly. This is what it means by being clothed in the sun. There's no aspect of his life. He don't come out public looking righteous and then go private being unrighteous. Are you following that? Uh, what you see with him is what you get. So um, the book of Isaiah says, uh, warns the people, don't follow certain prophets because they're speaking out of their own vision and from their own heart and their message did not come from the Lord. And they said that false prophets would arise and you can tell a false prophet because a false prophet finds out what tickles your ear and that already determines what his sermon is going to be. He tells you what you want to hear. Real friends, you know, your best friend is the one that can bring the best out of you. And you can't bring the best out of somebody without preaching truth. And sometimes the truth hurts if you're on the wrong side of the truth. Are you following that? But, 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 but good medicine uh, and treatment, the knife of the doctor, the messenger said, it must hurt before it heals. Sometimes it's got to cut you in order to bring healing. Are you following me? And sometimes we don't want to go through the process. And sometimes those that stand before us to preach don't want to take you through the process. So they rather teach what they know you like to hear. That's why some people want to get rid of ministers and throw people out because the book of Timothy says they, they don't endure sound doctrine. 
And when you don't endure sound doctrine, you're seeking teachers that tickle your ear. The Honorable Louis Barakon said, you're looking for a teacher that will preach a sermon that's congruent with your madness. That way you say, man, he was teaching. And then you go out and you're unchanged. How was he teaching and you're not changing? See, the minister say, if your mind is not changed, if your heart is not changed, if you're not getting better, then the religion that you're in is just a cover. And it's camouflaging you to make you look righteous, but you're not growing into righteousness. Are y'all following me? False teachers. False prophets. So today, for the short time, we want to talk about prophecy. The scripture teaches us, and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad made it clear, that it is only what you can prove that we should lay hold to. Not what you said. Not even what you believe. What can you prove? Because if you can prove something to me, then I can lay hold to it, he said. We're in a world where the 10% have deceived the 85% on face value. They haven't proved nothing. And so we have lived our lives believing somebody on face value. We can't come out of that kind of mindset except we train ourselves to follow only what you can prove. Prophecy is not something that's different from real history because real history is prophecy. Because we are taught by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, history is written ahead of time. We haven't walked away from history and have to go back to review it. It's sitting right in front of us and we're walking right into it. And he teaches us, and I I'm, I'm, I'm probably need to just read it here, what he went through in 1933, because um, the present world that we're in was already predicted to come into existence. What would happen in it? We've been recording history long before this world and this cycle of history. Right? right? Um, look what he says. Uh, the first term examination assignment of Mr. Elijah Muhammad. Who made the Holy Quran or Bible? How long ago? Will you tell us why does Islam renew her history every 25,000 years? Um, scripture is not the whole of the story. Scripture is a part of a larger writing. So whatever is in the scripture formed into a book, that's not the end all of it. Because in scripture, the Holy Quran and the Bible will take us up to the door of the hereafter, but they will not go in with us. So look how the Honorable Elijah Muhammad answers the questions of his teacher. He says the Holy Quran or Bible is made by the original people who is Allah. Let's stop right there. The whole of God's people is called Allah. Why? Because the essence of him is in all of us. Huh? So the word Allah starts with the word all. It's in it. Is that right? 
it, it, it's, in, it's in it now. And the word Allah, according to Islamic scholarship, is not derived from any other word. Most words you see, you'll find its root in some other word. But Allah is a root in itself. So it's a word, when you say Allah, it's a word that's completely independent of any other word or expression. Jamid means it's a root in and of itself. So when you say Allah, there's no language that's spoken on this planet that takes the word Allah and you have to say it another way because of this language. Whether it's Spanish or French or English, it's Allah. Yes, Are you following that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He can't be changed. He can't be altered. He is the supreme being. Yes, sir. All of us is Allah. And if Allah is completely independent, then why should we walk dependent on somebody else? So he, he, he obligates himself with the name Fard, which means one who we're obligated to obey. Why? Because he obligated himself to perfect the creation of the originator of the heavens and the earth. He ain't asked us or demand of us to obligate ourselves to him till he obligated himself. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We come up from the 10% teaching us, we got a kindergarten understanding of God. We act like God gives, see, that, that only your enemy does this, but the way we see God is through the lens of our enemy. Listen, listen. He gives us a certain set of laws. He don't have to obey the laws that he gives us. But once we come into the life-giving teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, we learn Allah has not divorced himself from his own law. He's a perfect example of it. Huh? God don't have to do that. The fact that he's God, he did it perfectly. So he could show you and I how to do it. We ain't going to get out of here today. I can see this stuff is it's too much in here. I'm going to You know, when you dig into this, if a false teacher is going to take us away from this, he's going to have to work hard. That's right. Huh? Because we're going to dig into this. That's right. So the original people who we are, we predate everybody here. Um, we are Allah. I used to read, if you will help Allah, I said, why would Allah need my help? Because the essence of him is in me. And he needs my help to come alive in me. He needs my, he needs my complete surrender. I'm fighting him. I'm sitting in the seat of submission, but I'm fighting him. With whatever identity I got in the world that's against him, I'm fighting him with it. But if you do like Elijah and you do like Farrakhan, who's not fighting him, you'll see him in you like we can see him in Elijah and Farrakhan. Then it says, the original people who is Allah, the supreme being. See, there's one amongst us that's wiser than all. He's exercising. What makes him that? I got the attributes of Allah. If his essence is in me, I got all the attributes in me. Yeah, but they're not developed. See, we believe that a human being has come. 
who has made manifest yeah. mm -hmm. and developed and evolved to the most excellent degree all 99 attributes in his own person. Go ahead. Go ahead. When you can perfect all 99 of the attributes that come with God in your own person, you become a God. Right, yes, sir. That's right. We got a lot of titles in the nation. There's a lot of titles in the world, but the title he left us with was the title of Muslim. Right. Why? Because once you live up to that title, you'll become like him. Yeah, right. That's right. That was his aim. And that's the aim of the Christ is to lead us into the face of God. Come on, come on. Because to come into the face of God means I'm completely coming into the face of myself and who I am. Then it says, or black man of Asia. Asia is the name of our planet. That's right. That's right. Right? Yes, sir. He says science. Come on now. The Quran will expire. Let me go back over there. The Quran will expire. Come on, come on. Didn't I say it will only get us to a certain point? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said he had already written another book for him. What would we need with another book? We got the Quran because the Quran will expire. And we're going to have to have something to take us beyond where the Quran can't take us. So he says the Quran will expire in the year 25,000, 9,080 years from the date of this writing. The nation of Islam is all wise and does everything right and exact. Let's stop right there. How do you do it right? First, you got to read. That's how you get it right. But when you take what you have read and you write down what you have read, you make it exact. The planet Earth which is the home of Islam. Come on. Come on. Not Uranus. Not Mars. Not Mercury. Earth is the home of Islam. Islam is an Arabic word describing submission to the will of God. So the Earth, that's the home of Islam, is approximately 25,000 miles in circumference. So this covers the span of a planet that's said to be 196,940,000 square miles, right? Yes, sir. This, will, this is not the radius. That's going from the center to the, to the, to the circumference. Right. But we're talking about the entire circumference. Yes. Six sextillion tons, right? Yes, sir. The wise man of the East said, we can't go any further, see, than the earth. Because its circumference, 24,000, right? Yes, sir. Well, approximately 25,000 miles, they'll say. So the wise man of the East. Why isn't there a wise man in the West? See, the West wasn't even developed. Wasn't nobody living here with cities and stuff like this here? See, we think this has always been here. Right. 
The wise man of the east, black man, make that clear. Because the white man will say, well, you know I'm over there. <laughs> That's the kind of world you live in now. Yes, we were all there. We're all from the same. <laughs> the wise man from the east makes history or Quran. So let's stop right there. Now the Quran has prophecy in it, law in it, principles described in it, but it's called history. So the history of Quran, he makes the history of the Quran to equal his home circumference. So the Quran is not teaching us anything to try to make us better to live on Mars. Right? It's not trying to teach us how to live on Mercury or Jupiter. It's trying to teach us how to live right here. It's the circumference of this planet. And look how, look how they do it. Since the, 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 the circumference is approximately 25,000 miles, then they make a year to every mile, thus every time the history lasts 25,000 years, he renews it for another 25,000 years. Now, we're in a cycle right now. The Qur'ans that we have right now are dealing with a 25,000 year cycle. And obviously, you know, um, we are in the 15,000 year like that, but when Mosa came, it was the 11,000 year, right? Yes, and of course, we don't have time to go into the, the calendars that they set, but we do know this, they made time. They made time based on Christ. B.C. and A.D., right? Yes, sir. right? Yes, sir. And B.C. is before Christ. A.D. deals with more of the acceptable year. For in Luke, he says, the Holy Spirit is upon me because I've been anointed to preach the gospel, you know, set free the captive. He goes through a, a list of things that he's commissioned to do, but he said, proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Huh? That's why we take acceptance after every meeting. We're proclaiming that we're in the days of Allah, that this is the year that he's accepting you. You say, well, no, I... I, I, I did acceptance back. If you did acceptance before this teaching came, it was another God that was called. We talking about false prophets right now. <laughs> so the scientists using the circumference of the planet now, the origin is thought. They tune in to the thinking of the people. Well, white folks do it too. Yeah, they do it by, you know, tapping your phone. <laughs> Find out what you're talking about and everything. They can't figure out what you're thinking. They, they, they just shove stuff in our minds. They, they make us think what they want us to think, so we'll act the way they want us to act. And the way that we think we think in ways where we're blind to ourselves. So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, he don't make us illiterate, he keeps us that way. He keeps us blind to ourselves. That's how he can master us. As long as you can't see who you really are, you're, you're at the mercy of his narrative. Mm. So, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan says, so the scientists sample the thinking of the people. He said, then once they get the thinking of the people, that's a sample. 
that's a specimen that tells you what's in the body of the people, politic, then they multiply it. And they keep multiplying it to they're up to 25,000 years, equaling the circumference of the planet. And if you remember the Greeks, the Greeks drew imaginary lines in the earth. You can buy a globe right now or a map. And those imaginary lines are right there on your map. And they deal with longitude in degrees. They deal with latitude in degrees, right? So if someone gives you a certain longitude and a certain latitude, you can pinpoint. You can pinpoint right where that is on the map. So when these wise men tune into the thinking of the people, they're following the longitude and the latitude of our thoughts and actions. They can pinpoint not only what we're going to do, they can pinpoint when we're going to do it. And when it's time for some event to take place that's major in the history that they have, on an as-need-to-know basis, through inspiration, they raise one called a prophet or messenger. Y'all with me now? And they don't, these men don't know nothing about what, they, 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 get, um, uh, they get called. They, these are not, uh, they're just ordinary men. And they get called. There was nothing fantastic about what they were doing before the calling came. And some of them felt inadequate. Moses said, wait a minute, who am I to go before Pharaoh? I'm slow of tongue. God had to tell him, who made your tongue? Don't worry about what you're going to talk about. I'm going to put words in your mouth to say. God, I'm not qualified. I don't call qualified people. My call is the qualifying agent. Once you accept my call, nobody on earth can come against that call. When you're standing on the truth that I'm giving you in that call. So the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan says, so this last man that comes, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, he's not getting something on just an as-need-to-know basis. He's coming in the volume of the book. He's coming to fulfill the prophets. Are you all with me? He's not coming to set up and be a sign of someone else. He's the end of sign. He is the reality that the signs have been pointing to. So when he comes, this longitude and latitude of thought and pinpointing actions and when those actions and events will take place, he's got one ear on the mouth of anyone that's talking to him and he's got the other ear on the prophecies and as soon as we open our mouth to him he can tell where we fit because he's been given the root of the thinking that produced these events now I'm going to read something to you what the white scholarship is saying in Christianity, and of course the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, true Christian uh, or, um, Christianity is Islam. And that because a true Christian is a Muslim and a real Muslim is a Christian when properly understood. Can you imagine a man with his ear on the prophecies and an ear on your mouth and when you open your mouth, he can tell what type you are. Because since all the people were involved and the tuning in went into all their thinking, then all of us are involved. So every type of person is already in the scripture. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They saw us coming before we got here. Yes, sir. They knew what we were going to do. It don't make no difference what your name is what your favorite music is, or what your favorite food is, they saw us before we got here. 
They know us. When Malcolm X came to the nation, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad told his son, he'll be with us for about 10 years. He knew where he fit, and he knew how long he would be there. He was not involved in guesswork. Some of us come and go. When I came to the nation, I thought everybody loved it and wanted to stay. I came out on Wednesday night, and Minister Akbar was teaching. He was teaching on 90 Day Wonders. They come in, crash through the door, excited. 90 days, by day 89, you don't see them no more. That's not to put, put them down, but there's a type. That's what I'm talking about. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And they saw these types coming. We ain't doing nothing new before God. Go ahead, go ahead. Mm. I asked Brother Jabril, sitting down, I said, well, if we've been making history or Quran, Since the deportation of Moon, where are the other Qurans? He said the Honorable Elijah Muhammad told us they're locked up in a secret vault in Mecca. Now those Qurans can't be like this one. Because the devil wasn't made in those in those times. You probably get a, if you got a hold of one of those Quran, he said, Master Fraud Muhammad's father started taking him into that secret vault at the age of four. Mm -hmm. That's real education. Yeah, you can read at four. That's right. Real education. We, we, we're so far behind. Well, my baby, they, they five, they'll be six later on this year, but they start in school. And as and, and soon as they get to the classroom, they got to learn the letter A. We didn't realize. Man, at five years old, you're supposed to be able to recognize your name on the board the first day in kindergarten. Come on. And the rest of the industrialized world is training their children at the age of three so that by, by the time they get to kindergarten, you could put 10 names up there. They know their name from any other name that's on the board. They can recognize it. So at four, he's learning histories. And he was able to recite how many cycles? Five or six of them. And if you go to the Muslim world right now, you got people that can recite this Quran from, the, from cover to cover and not miss a word or a syllable. So if you got people who have not developed themselves the way this man has, because the efficacy of Master Far Muhammad's wisdom is evident. First of all, they can't get rid of it. And the only people that are paying any attention to it are people that the world never paid attention to. Talking about us. People that are high up in the world ain't paying no attention to this teaching the way that we are. And they can't get rid of it. And guess what? They can't get rid of us. Because we learned in that teaching that Shabazz 50,000 years ago, way beyond this Quran, made a people that can't be destroyed. So once a people was made that can't be destroyed, then God comes and puts something in us that can't be destroyed. The teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad will always be here. You could be homeless and you'll be telling somebody about Elijah Muhammad and Louis Farrakhan. So they can forget it now. Is here to stay. And I said, so the Quran, they in a secret vault. And if you read, they transcribed 
a message that Malcolm X gave when he was in the nation, the, his, the black man's history, he called it. He talks about the secret vaults too, because he sat with the messenger. He said, these secret vaults are there. And this one went in and began to learn these histories. Can you imagine there's a Quran, the devil ain't even in it? Because he didn't come 6,000 years ago. Disbelievers ain't in it. Go back far enough, you don't even have believers. The messenger said, you go back far enough, there was no concept of belief in God. We knew him. And we just acted on the nature that he created us in. That's why at the end of the believer's journey, you'll see big fields await the wide awake man. And, and Minister Farrakhan said the messenger told him the wide awake man is a man that knows God. Man that knows God don't believe in, the devil don't believe in God, he knows him. He's having a conversation with him in the Quran. And in the Bible, he ain't saying, well, I believe there's a God. And uh, He knows him. That's right. And he tells him what he's going to do to try to take us out of the knowledge of him. And he's done such a successful job, our journey back to knowing him like we did as the original people. We got to start off with belief. That's right. And he's trying to uproot us from that. So, a lot of this, the messenger said, we, were, we couldn't know this ahead of time. This is a hidden knowledge. He said it had to be held up because it would have interfered with the devil's rule. Yes, sir. We needed the devil's rule because there was an aspect a dark side of the original nature that had to be exposed. What do you mean a dark side in that? Well, 66 trillion years ago, somebody just decided, look, I need everybody speaking the same dialect. Somebody must have said, well, you know, we ain't doing that. Not down here. So he got mad and wanted to destroy all of us. And the far as he got was part of our planet being shot off into space and it's called moon, right? Yes, sir. And we didn't have signs before that because God was among the people, the messenger said. Now you can take this or let it alone, but you know, he said, so we didn't, we, we didn't know nothing about signs. We didn't have symbols and signs. See, the world is full of that today. That's right. That's right. And too many of us have taken the sign as the reality. So the moon went out there and the messenger said, the, the originator didn't intend to have that out there, but he permitted it. He said, so we left it out there as a sign. Now a whole new world of thought is coming in because we're using signs and symbols to represent something that's not the reality, but it's to symbolize the reality. Mm. And this act of rebellion concerned the scientists. Then 50,000 years ago, one of them said, I'm going to make another kind of man. Tough. They said, well, you can make him, you just can't make him here. So Mr. Shabazz rebelled against his own circle, right? Yes, sir. And took his whole family down into East Asia and he says, and now they call it Africa. It wasn't called that at first. That's right. That's right. Just like it said, we took them into West Asia 
as they now call it Europe, but we didn't call it Europe at first. Right. Listen, listen, listen. But once we put some people there, then we called it something else, okay? Yes, so Shabazz took his whole family. So when you go make Hodge and stuff, don't be coming back here telling us ain't nobody over there named Shabazz and that. He told you he took his whole family. We know ain't nobody over there. That, that name didn't come up again to the honorable Elijah Muhammad star teaching because it was hidden from us in that. Are y'all with me now? Y'all don't mind learning about this, do you? Because look, when the minister's gone, they are gonna tell you all this is a, is a lie. Soon as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was gone, they said he lied about the mother plane. Now, from the Pentagon, the intelligence department of the United States government used the name mothership. They ain't nothing but the mother plane. Hell, Dr. Frankenstein had it right. We. We're recording angels. Yes, We're back to claim the pyramid. Huh? That's right. Good yes, sir. Pyramids is a testament of the high science that we exercise. Buildings around here are collapsing. When did you build it? 1700s, 1800s, early 1900s? Your building's collapsing. There's no L and I department over there by the pyramids. <laughs> well, we gotta see is it structurally sound and everything. <laughs> well, so so that we can go home. Look at this. Look at what the see in when you're in a seminary. They take you through this kind of study. Um, let me see how he starts this. He says, in addition to straightforward prophetic utterance, future events are revealed through types, symbols, parables, dreams, and prophetic ecstasy. Since there are attendant problems concerning the interpretation of prophecy as a whole, there will be no understanding of prophecy apart from understanding its channels. In other words, if a man of God is raised to give you what is called prophecy, you're never going to come into an understanding of, of what they prophesy if you don't understand the prophet. You can't push the teacher aside and think you're going to graduate in the subject matter. Huh? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, you can take all the words that I have given you, but you'll never be able to succeed with those words if the God that revealed it to me is not behind you. Huh? How many people have taken it? They got the stuff at home in their closet, in the garage. They can't do nothing with it. They got these lessons. People got footage. I've seen the minister say, look, we'll pay you for some of those things. And you don't have to give them to us. We just want to make a copy of some of the things. Because we want to preserve what the honorable Elijah Muhammad had. I, you know, I, ain't give it, I didn't get what I wanted so some of them didn't give it up but let me tell you something that ain't stopped them from revealing to Farrakhan see he told, he told the minister brother you don't have to study just stand up and teach he said that didn't mean I didn't have to study what he was telling me was that God was going to reveal something through me you can't study what ain't been revealed to you yet. He said, let God reveal it first. Then when it comes through me, now we can study it. Find out, you know, the, 
the what, when, and why, and where this is coming from. Man, we, we, we need to get so deep into this, can't nobody talk us out of this. Look, because that's what they're going to try to do. I'm trying to find the, uh, there's a part in here. Um, in the science of theology, types properly signifies the preordained representative relation which certain persons, events, institutions of the Old Testament bear to corresponding persons, events, and institutions of the New Testament. Um, and you know the type is always fulfilled in the anti-type. So what's a type? A type is the vessel that God used to present his word. And his word generally is a correction to the people. Right now the major religions the, of the Jews, the Christians, and the Muslims, they all believe in somebody coming to correct what's gone wrong on this planet. And they're all in agreement that Messiah has something to do with this. They just differ on the scheduling, which helps you to identify who they may be. Yesterday at the event, I said, well, we're in a Judeo-Christian society who believe the Messiah came, but Jagger Hoover didn't get the memo, Come on, Come on. right? Because he took our money and said, look, we got we to gotta spy on the churches, spy on black organizations, get all the black leaders lined up. Well, why are we doing this, Mr. Hoover? We got to stop the rise of a black Messiah. Well, why are you, why are you alerting the Federal Bureau of Investigation and their agents to stop the rise of a Messiah when you in a society that said the Messiah came 2,000 years ago. What did Mr. Hoover know? What body of knowledge is he feeding from? Maybe he realized we've been under false teachers and false prophets. Like Jesus said, would rise up. So the people that God uses, they don't just stand up and say something. They make an impact, a divine impact on the day that they lived. That means the time that those prophets lived, they did a work for God. And they were effective in their day up to the time and what they were supposed to do. The one thing that they would never be able to do is reform devil. The prophets came to the realization they cannot reform him. You need material in somebody to reform them. They have to have some reforming material. And when you're reforming, you're reforming them and trying to return, turn them and restore them to something that's morally right. But the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, this nature was made with nothing right in it. The nature is bent. And if you take a container and bend it, and you leave another container straight, when you pour water into each container, the minister said, the, the water has to take on the shape of the container. That's right. That's right. If a man's mind and heart is straight, the water will go in straight. But if you bend the vessel and pour it in, then the water got to go with the bending that takes place. So when the word of God comes in us, we can come off dope. When the word of God comes in us and we've been bent up and shaped like Mr. Muhammad taught us, we came up out of prisons, we came up out of dope, we came up out of uh, gambling houses, we came up out of riotous living, we came up out of false religion. Black men jumped out of white women's beds. Huh?
We came out of a false way of understanding progress. Here's a man beat you within an inch of your life, rape your woman, sell your daughter, and you want to be equal with him. And you talking about that's progress. I want to be like him, the one that raped your woman. I want to be like him, the one that sold your daughter off after he raped her. Well, we should be trying to establish better race relations. If you didn't get race, good race relations after raping our women for 310 years, we ain't never going to get it. Huh? That's right. That's a frame of mind that's been twisted, that needs to be straightened out, so we can see properly. Yeah. So you pour the word of God into that bent vessel, and they'll take that word and poison it with an imperialist idea. Man, we can. Ooh, Christ is good. You know. You know what? We're gonna take. We're going to take that sign and we're going to conquer people in that sign. We're going to give them Jesus. We're going to take their land. We're going to take the resources. We're going to take their self-respect. And when we finish with them, we're going to take their life. What's left of it. But you got the Bible. You put your hand on it and swore by it, yeah. But the words in it went into a vessel that's bent. I can't, I wasn't made to submit to God. Don't get mad at him now. The message say they, they ain't gonna help you to get mad at white folks. They were made this way. He's quoting Caucasians. He's saying, look, I wasn't made to submit to black. So that you're not going to get them. Well, they mistreated me at the Waffle House. <laughs> they discriminated me at Walmart's. Let's boycott it or something. Or, you know, the minister said, they're going to keep insulting you. Till you get so tired, you'll be ready. You think everybody that went to the wilderness with Moses was saying, yeah, let's get away from Pharaoh? No. They were fighting Moses. Question them all, who made you a leader over us? Who told you to teach us this? You know, I got a Lexus in, in Egypt. I got a condo, a townhome. Shit, I just got it, my kitchen redone. Shit, I ain't, I'm not going nowhere. Talking about no separation. <laughs> so they didn't leave because they loved the, the Lord. They start catching hell. You bury enough of your grandchildren. When you realize the young brother in the hood who hasn't even finished 12th grade and many of those that have still can't read beyond third grade and we're supposed to think they got international connections. They grow the poppy seeds over there, then they got a lab, they go over there and get it, put it in a lab, process it, make heroin, get the fentanyl and put all that there. Not one a black gun manufacturer on earth and we got guns well we need to get rid of the guns they banning books but not guns huh and, and, and we really just sitting here taking it I mean, what can we do? We don't know nobody. He's kept us illiterate. That's right. Go ahead. That's right. Yes, sir. And all of this was predicted, but we still don't want to submit. So the minister said, we got to keep getting the insults and the tragedies. Each one is building a case. He said, this God did not come 9,000 miles to lose. No, sir. He's not going to write, write us off and just say, well, you know what? They, 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 they're just going to all get killed. He's not going to do that. No, sir. This, this, this flag going to stay up. Huh? This flag going to stay up 
to God get all his people through Farrakhan. So, um, so this Abraham, he still had to be effective in his day. Moses, of uh, 4,000 years ago, you see, these are, these are prophecies, 75% of what you got in the Bible is a time that we're walking in right now. The Moses of 4,000 years ago, the real Moses called Musa, Muhammad in the USA, but he, he, he had to get them up. Have you noticed that Jesus, the only thing he said about Moses, he said two things. He said, I'm not come to throw away the law of Moses, but I came to fulfill it. And then the next time he brings up Moses in the book of John, he don't talk about Egypt and Pharaoh. He said, as Moses lifted up the serpent of the wilderness. Whoa. What about Pharaoh? What about Egypt? What about marching down? He's, no, 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 no. Moses lifted the serpent of the wilderness. Well, who is that? See, the Mosa 4,000 years ago went to the caves and hillsides of Europe. That's a hidden history. And when we say it's hidden, all we got to do is find the hiding place. It's in the scripture. You got to lift that verse up. And say, well, what kind of history is he talking about? What about what about? I thought, I thought uh, Moses was in uh, dealing with Pharaoh and stuff. No, that's a prophetic picture. But the past picture is the Moses of four thousand years ago was in the caves and hillsides of Europe. And when you go to the natural history museums, you see them putting it all on display. Cavemen. Running around cutting animal skins and dressing in them and living in caves and learned about fire. Right? Fire, fire advanced him. Because he's made of fire. His spirit is a fiery spirit. He claims in the Quran, his father, I'm made of fire. I got a whole federal government agency dedicated to fire ATF alcohol is that fire water that's what the red man called it tobacco is that fire weed and a gun that's a firearm man of fire yeah that's what the early settler came with he wants to regulate all that don't go by what the NRA is saying. That everybody should be able to carry a gun. They don't want black people carrying no gun. No, sir. Yeah, as, as Bobby Seale and Huey Newton and them, when they start carrying their guns out and walk down to the state capitol, Ronald Reagan was governor. Somebody came up with the Mulford Act. One of their legislators came up with the Mulford Act, and that, which was gun legislation. Let's check black men walking down the street with assault weapons. And the NRA supported the mall for that. So don't let the NRA fool you to our oh, Second Amendment rights. Yeah, right. But as soon as you see black men carrying them, you want gun legislation. Biden can't get them to submit to some real gun legislation. But if every black man that can get registered, get a gun, and we start carrying them out on us, you see the NRA will, will come down to the White House protesting about some serious gun legislation. So the prophets of, are effective. And it says here, these are Christian theologians saying it. So the former, meaning the prophet, must not only resemble the latter. So whoever's going to fulfill the prophets he got to look and sound something like what they sound like, and they got to look and sound something like what he's going to sound like. And, it, and, and, and not only must they resemble each other, they must be designed to resemble each other. And it must have been so designed 
in its original institution, it must have been designed in preparation for the latter one to come. He's got to prefigure this last man to come. The type as well as the antitype must have been preordained and they must have been preordained as constituent parts of the same general scheme of divine providence. The definition which I propose for the word type in its theological sense is as follows. A type is an institution, historic, historical event or person ordained by God which effectively prefigures some truths connected with Christ. See, these are the men we're dealing with right now. Yes, sir. Take it or let it alone. What we got to ask ourselves is, um, did the honorable Elijah Muhammad walk in the way Moses walked in Egypt? It says, and Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians. So every profession that was in Egypt, the children of Israel who are enslaved for 400 years learned all of that science. Have we fulfilled that? Because we know everything from pushing a broom to putting a satellite out in space. Everywhere you go, black folks are in it. Black women were used to calculate space flights before they got computers to do it. They called the black woman the computer. Isn't that amazing? And they, they made a true story about that. But I mean, imagine the mind and how to calculate space flight before they got a computer to do it. We've been janitors, garbage men, right? We've been, after the Civil War, we were the only skilled artisans. So in 1865, when it came to roofing, plumbing, carpentry, uh, everything in the, in the building trades, the only ones that could do it were black men. So they had to begin to shut us out. And they set up unions and wouldn't allow us in the unions so they could train up white men to do it. We think they're doing us a favor by letting us in the union, but we already knew this without a union. We were the workers of that. And our own Nation of Islam historical research department brought all this out. So what, what they describe in Egypt, we're fulfilling that. Now Moses is trying to figure out what resources He's going to need to deal with Pharaoh. But look how, look how God deals with Moses. He said, what's that in your hand? In other words, no, don't look for something else. You work with what you got. Huh? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad started out first only wanting to go after those of us that had gone to higher institutions of learning. But we thought after learning all that, we didn't need nobody like Elijah Muhammad. So he was getting nowhere with, with the learned class of us that he felt could get us up overnight. So he had to turn back to those of us that were at the bottom rung. And I believe that was Allah's design. That's the way Moses had to go. Work with what you got, Moses. And that's what Elijah did. Moses didn't arm himself with a carnal weapon. And those that were with him did not arm themselves with carnal weapons. Didn't we have to give up carnal weapons yes, to walk sir. with the honorable Elijah Muhammad? Yes, sir. We set up check procedures so no one would bring them into our meetings. Yes. See, all of this you can find in the history of Moses with that. It's right there in the scripture. 
That means someone came and prefigured and gave us a picture of what that last man would look like and what he would sound like. And he gave us a picture of what we would sound like. Because when Moses started preaching, they had never heard of the God that Moses was representing. We had never heard of the God when the honorable Elijah Muhammad was preaching to us. So he has to start using his power in the land to start breaking the power of the ones that are over us. We in a world where we, you know what? We, we believe you when you show you got more power than the other person. We, we're not into love that much, but we are into power. God knows that, so he's using the most powerful man in the land and said, when you bring him down, everybody got to look at you. How do we know they did that? Because after they leave, and they get to Jericho, and it says Joshua remembered Moses. What did Joshua do? He didn't send 12 spies in, he sent two. And they went to the prostitute's house, right? Because they know she got the 411. And when they got to Rahab's house, what'd she say? You know, I was looking on Instagram. <laughs> Knew I'd get your attention. But look what the scripture says she said to them. We heard about your God. She said, everybody here is talking about him. They didn't know. They went to try to spy out the land to find out what these people, you know, were going to do. And she said, they've been talking about your God. And you know what? Every man here, their heart has failed them. They so terrified of what your God did to Pharaoh. They before the fight could even start. They don't even want to have to deal with y'all. Not because of you all, but because of your God. That's the way God is setting it up right now. When America goes down, the whole world is going to be talking. They're already talking because they're afraid of America. We don't understand America's footprint in the world. Because we don't pay attention to her foreign policy and how she deals with other countries. But when they see Louis Farrakhan standing up. That's why when he goes to other countries, they just shut down television. They change the program. That's how the Outer Limits used to come on. There's nothing wrong with your television set. We are interrupting your regular programming. And Farrakhan comes on, That's right. speaking to millions in these countries. We are in the fulfillment of prophecy. Yes, sir. The events and the persons that were predicted thousands of years ago have shown up. The things that were said to happen, they are already been starting to happen. There's a little bit more we got to walk through, but this world is closing out. We are supposed to experience the best part of the hereafter. Nobody lives forever. But if we are faithful, we will see the beginning of a new world coming in. What it takes now is some soldiers strong enough to just make sure Satan's world goes down. Huh? That's all we need. The tree of Islam has finally bared its fruit. It took a long time for the fruit to come, but they're here now. And the, the unequaled wisdom of God is being poured into them. And we take him back over. We just didn't know where to go to take over. But you ain't got to run to the White House or the State House 
The messenger started us in the kitchen. Come on. He said, don't go over there. Something's wrong with your kitchen. Take it over and turn your kitchen into a clinic. Huh? Throw out the pig. Get Oscar Mayer out of there. Take over. Go home with a with a takeover. You know how Jesus said, if your right eye offend you, pluck it out. And if your left arm offend you, cut it off. And well, he don't mean maim yourself. He said, you just gotta go after what's wrong in your life with a warlike spirit. Go after it. Raise the sword of Islam and declare war. Assalamu alaikum. All praise is due to Allah. Keep that applause going for our Delaware Valley Student Regional Minister, Rodney Muhammad. Praise be to Allah. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful representation. So, dear family, as we start to wind down our meeting, um, just three questions to ask before. Is anyone, how many first timers do we have out today? Anyone out for their first time? First time? Praise be to Allah. There was one? I saw. Oh, my brother. Oh, go ahead. Praise be to Allah. There's another? Two? Oh, y'all got the easy hands. Got the easy. I didn't see. I didn't see it. Praise be to Allah. This, this. Well, this is dear family. My next question is: Is um, how many of us believe that what we heard today is true and it's good for our people and all of fallen humanity? Praise be to Allah. Well, my next question is that if you heard what you heard today and you believe it's true, it's good for our people, and you believe that you have enough of the original substance in you, and you would like to come and help with this work, how many would be willing to do that today? Those who are first timers. Anyone? That one back. Come on down, sis. Praise be to her. Oh, she got the baby. Well, can somebody get her name or just have her? Yeah. We got our sister in the back. Can we get her name, please? She's got the baby. Praise be to Allah. Give her a round of applause. Is there anyone else? She says she wants to help with the work, and she's got the baby with her. She's that's real, that's real commitment right there. Who's that? Your daughter? Give her go ahead, beloved. Praise be to Allah. Oh, it's a family affair. It's always in the family. I would like to get her name just so we can make the announcement that our sister would like to come down. Yeah. Sister Karima. Karima. Sister Karima, we got you. Uh, sister Arlene will take care of everything from this point on. Give her a round of applause, dear family. Praise be to Allah. You know, family, um, this is a powerful teaching. And sometimes we get a little shame face or uh, bashful. That was country, wasn't it? I wasn't supposed to say shame face, was I? A little bashful. You know, sometime it happens. You know, I, I'm like that. I'm just like that. But yeah, but if you feel that way and you really want to come on and get your name put back into the Book of Life, see uh, either Brother David for the brothers and Sister Arlene for the sisters if you want to do it a little more discreetly. And just, just do it. You know, I mean, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad did this very thing. He came up in acceptance. And look who he became. Praise be to Allah. So we don't know what's in you. But let Islam and the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad as represented by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan bring out of you what only Allah knows is there and he can extract it. Yes. So, dear family, with that being said, we're going to move very quickly uh, right to the next aspect of our program, which is charity. Um, after that message, do you feel charitable? Yes. I just got to ask the question. Do you feel charitable? Yes. <laughs> oh, praise. Brother divine hand goes up. Brother Divine gives one hundred and fifty dollars. Now, when our brother gave, I was about to complete the sentence before I could complete the sentence. He threw it up, and I remember seeing that spirit in the Honorable Louis Farrakhan when Masjid Allah wanted to rebuild their parking lot. And then, brother, um, what's our brother name from New York? Oh, he's the Imam. Oh, I can't remember his name. But anyway, he said, "Who would give the first ten thousand dollars?" The minister stood right up, just like that. Well, Brother Divine, in that spirit, you did the same thing, brother. You shot it right up. You didn't hesitate. All oh, praise is due to Allah. Yes, sir, Brother Josh. Brother Shaheed, $100. There's another, my brother, Shaheed. Praise be to Allah. Brother, Sha brother Shaheed, though he's quiet and he wears the mask, but he's a heck of a speaker. You know, we find that out on FOI class. This is y'all ain't here yet, but uh, who knows what Allah is going to bring forth from us from our brother Shaheed. Thank you, brother Shaheed, for giving. Praise be to Allah. $100. Anyone else? 
$150 on the table. $150 on the table. Brother Charles, $50. Brother Charles, $50. Thank you, Brother Charles. Another one of the quiet storms and sister on the side. He's out every week, but our brother always, he's very charitable. Praise be to Allah. Yeah, um, is there anyone else? Fifty, one hundred dollars? I'm coming to your number. Don't even worry about that. <laughs> Y'all all right? All right, fifty, one hundred on the table. All right, dear family, how many twenty dollar donators do we have today? Twenty dollars, got brother Zebulon. You know, I'm gonna, I got, I got a twenty. I'm gonna, I'm gonna help out with that. They said, don't ever ask nobody to do something. Now, don't get me wrong. I pay charity. But no, I, I, I want to give again, because the more we give, the more we receive. Yes, sir. Yes, yes ma'am, Sister, Sister Michelle. Sister Lisa gives $20. Sister Lisa, $20. Where's Sister Lisa? Right. Oh, Sister Lisa, praise be to a lot. Yes, ma'am. Brother Zebulon. Yes, sir, brother. Brother Battle, $20. Brother Battle. Battles. Battles. Brother Battle. Thank you, Brother Battle. Praise be to a lot. Yes, ma'am, Sister Michelle. Sister Alima gives $20. Sister Alima gives $20. Thank you, Sister Alima. Praise be to a lot. Brother Maurice, twenty dollars. Brother Paul, brother Paul gives twenty dollars. Thank you, brother Paul. Come on now, brother Paul said it ain't just on y'all. I'm brother Paul. I'm gonna give y'all too. Yes, sir. Brother Quincy, brother Quincy, twenty dollars. Give him a round of applause. Praise be to Allah. Praise be. To yes, sir. Who else? Brother Michael, twenty dollars. Give him a round of applause. Yes, ma'am. Who is it? Sister Darshan. No, Darshan, 15. I'm going to put $5 with that. She gave $20. Praise be to Allah. Brother Jabril, how much? 14. 14. We'll round that off. <laughs> We're going to round that off. You got it, brother? All right. I got the other five, five sisters. Get them a round of applause. Anyone else? Anyone else? Yes, sir. Thank you, brother. Yes, sir, brother Josh. Brother Christopher gives twenty dollars. All praise is due to Allah. I said proper. Yes, ma'am. Sister Arlene in the back. Brother Christopher, I ain't gonna, I'm not gonna say it right now, but I need to see you, brother, at the end of the meeting. No. <laughs> praise. I'm. A, I know I, I should be using the mic for that, but I'm gonna put it out now. So, yes, sir. Sister, Sister Arlene, ten dollars. Praise be to Allah. All praise is due to Allah. Any other twenty dollar donators? Twenty. How about ten dollars? Five dollars? Three? Sister Arlene started it off with ten. She started with the ten. If you have ten, five, four, three, two, one. Or dear family, if you just had a good spirit and you really wanted to give but you just didn't have it, you know, all praise is due to Allah. Continue to hear the life giving teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad as represented by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And in Allah's own good time, he will allow us to be able to give whatever it is that we'd like to give. But let me just go a step further and say thank you. Even if you didn't give a monetary donation, thank you for giving up your time today. Thank you for being here. And because your presence is always wanted and accepted. And at some point, you're going to find yourself in some use if you keep coming out. I mean, every time you leave here, you leave with something you didn't come in with, right? That's a knowledge and a wisdom and maybe an understanding of a given subject matter. So all praise is due to Allah for the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And we so thank Allah for the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan for the work that he is doing to us and for us by the grace of Allah. Yes, sir. All right. So as the receptacles, have they left the floor? OK, they're leaving now. Um, all the men hold your seats at the end of the meeting. Is that FOI or just all men? All men. All right. Got it. I already know what that's about. So, you know, <laughs> it's about Black Father's Day, right? <laughs> Come on now. Hey, you know, for those who weren't here at the very inception, we put emphasis on Black Father's Day. Right. We went into some things. Praise be to Allah. Because it's, it's hard to be a man in the kind of world we live in today. But if you are a man, a black man, and a black father, you deserve a starry crown. Praise be to Allah. Praise be to Allah. Give it up. Give it up. So, dear family, we have no further announcements except that the MGT has bean soup on the first level. And I don't know. There maybe there's some other surprises down there. I, they didn't, I didn't get the memo. But stop at the table on the way out, and Allah will uh, bless us to be able to um, take care of what we have to take care of. So if there are no other um, announcements, 
And they're not. And there are no other questions. And all hearts and minds are at ease. Let us close with prayer. In a manner in which you are most comfortable, follow along silently. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the most merciful, the one God to whom all praise is due, the Lord of the worlds, the beneficent, the most merciful, master of the day of judgment in which we now live, thee alone do we serve and thee alone do we beseech for aid. O Allah, guide us on the straight path, the path of those upon whom thou hast bestowed favors and not the path of those upon whom thy wrath is brought down and nor those who go astray after hearing thy teaching. Say he, Allah is one. Allah is he upon whom we all depend. He neither beget nor is he begotten, and there is none like him. I bear witness that none deserves to be served or worshiped besides Allah, who appears to us in the person of Master W. Farad Muhammad. We are eternally grateful to him and given to us his wise choice in the messenger Messiah and the exalted Christ and the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And to the two of them, we are eternally grateful for the messianic figure that was shaped in their minds and with their hands and given to us as a gift in the honorable minister, Louis Farrakhan. It's in their names we pray. I mean. Dear family, our meeting is to Smith. Go in peace. And remember, we are not nonviolent with anyone who is violent with us. Assalamu alaikum. Word and guidance through his divine servant and mercy in our midst, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. He is the light shining in the darkness to guide us through this dark hour. All praise is due to Allah. We, the mighty MGT here of Muhammad's Mosque number 12, would like to give you just a small token of appreciation for your dedication, your sacrifice, and just coming out, because I know I got text messages in the winter. Sister, you see the weather? It's going to be cold on Saturday. So I thank you, brothers. It was ice, it was storms, but you still came out and you held post for us. So we thank you so much for your sacrifice that you do. We understand that it's not easy, the task that you have as FOI, but we thank you for everything that you do this day and every day. And we pray that Allah keeps blessing you and your families one thousandfold. That's so crazy. Sister Michelle, when you get up, she's going to hand you the keychain. So before I close and sit down, I'm going to read these words from the minister. They come from the final call, and it's his last updated is said on July, excuse me, June 13, 2017. 2017. And it says, when you look at the children, when you look at your children, excuse me, thank Allah God for the women or woman that bore your sons or your daughters. Be kind to them and help them in rearing your children. Think about the son or daughter that you brought into the world that you have not communicated with in years. Write your children if they are away from you and do not be too proud to say, son, I've been wrong. There is nothing wrong with that. Do you know your children will love you more if you could muster the courage to say, daddy was wrong, but I intend to make it right and I hope you will forgive me for not being, being to you as I should be. You have to start making amends. You have to start reconciling. You have to start getting it together and start opening up to your children. And again, sorry for being nervous, but I love you all and I thank you. Happy Black Father's Day, Assembly. That's our sister, regional student captain, Kamisha Muhammad. Give her a round of applause, please. Keep it going, family. You know, and as our sister was reading, as she was reading that last part, it took me right, it took us right into self-improvement, yes, the sir. basis for community yes, development. Because yes, we can only look squarely in the mirror at ourselves truthfully when we have arising after self-examination, self-analysis, and self-correction, and look at ourselves and say, I was wrong. So let's stay on the path, dear brothers. Thank our sisters, because we're not going nowhere without them. <laughs> we only have our way. When we by ourselves and when we with our sisters, we complete the circle or the cycle. Y'all all right? Praise be to Allah. Well, dear family, we've made prayer. Our meeting is dismissed. Thank you once again for being here. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you.